What a wonder to be in God's praise. Thank you, Father. Be exalted, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let me see that everybody. One of the, the best places to be is to be together with God's people. Just worshiping the Lord. What a joy. 
You know, when we sing about the blood, some of us recall that except for the blood, by now I will be dead or very deadly. And the ball of blood pulled me from the Mary Claire. In 1978, I was almost drowned in the water side in Hero Abba. But I saw life, the mystery. I fell into the water, we went to, I don't know the we road, we were trying different kinds of lifestyle. Before I know it, the water caught me, but we were by the river. And threw me off the first time. I know when he threw me off the first time, I know when he threw me off the second time. I knew when he threw me off the third time. That a man jumped in from somewhere, I don't know dived into the river, caught me on the air as I was about to land the third time and flick me out of the water. By now, I would have been in hell. I know that everybody in hell believes, but not unto salvation. Because they now see and know. And what evangelists said, is it... Um, in a bunker or a robber. He said he can think that on the gate of hell there's a sign written there. Lose all hope, all ye that cross this gate. And as you cross it, you lose all hope. The wound the devil gave me in 1979 at the Tenant Road, 225 Tenant Road. And see current is scared they now. I mean, if I was still with him, I don't know what he would do to me. But that blood, that blood, on a high, on a, at a young age, we were already on the expressway to iniquity and destruction. My classmate was born as an armed robber at Aba, or four who were together at Green Tree Primary School in Hero Daba. My friends, those days, um, which year was that, 19 what? The early 80s, when Crystal Park was the only hotel that was running in Naba, they sneaked from school, went for party with their father's car, they went and took it without the man knowing. As they were returning drunk, they hit the covet by Fortacot Road, and he died at that spot. That was how secondary school ended. Except for Jesus, maybe I would have been in that car. So this law, this law, this law. It's something you need to understand and it's something you need to pay attention to. And that's what I want us to do very briefly and we still pray. We read some scriptures. And I want you to note the scriptures. And I hope you are in church, you are in fellowship with the Bible. You know, we are raising a generation that is abandoning the book. Very dangerous trend. Very dangerous. You know that something is new does not make it better. That something is new, that the new side does not automatically make it better. New things can be better. You know there is a subtle word to make the book called Bible unpopular. The subtlety of that word is that they want to use required to deal with the book called Bible is in church and in fellowship. Because that's a consequence of the Bible. But gradually the book called Bible is losing ground in its own consequence. I know you have all the gadgets, the It's just a briefcase. It's not what is called Bible. There is a book. It's a book that's called Bible. And we're raising a generation. I don't know about the book. One of our young men traveled to the UK with the family. They were in a hurry, left their school bag. He said, when I get there, I'll Bible for them. The area they were in UK. He went through all the stores and the libraries. They couldn't find one Bible to buy. 
So you have to go to an antique shop where they sell second hand things. That was where the man told them, Yes, I think I saw something like that. The man went and started searching and searching and saw one old Bible. That's what they bought. They couldn't find Bible in all the library. We are dealing with an organized devil. Watch it. And you are training your younger ones to go to church and fill it without the Bible. Remember the Bible says, train off a child the way he should go. When he grows up, he will not depart from it. I was in a church in Abuja. 80% of the children that came to church came with gadgets, phones, toys. Less than 20% came with Bible. A very dangerous prayer. And we're the generation that will bring an awakening. So go and get your book. Don't tell me it's very heavy. If it's not heavy in your hand to carry it around, check yourself. You may not be well. Because your head is only a weight on the body when the body But if you are sick, even if your head is small, you'll be feeling a weight on your neck. That's a sign that you need to go to hospital. The book we are talking about is not an ordinary book. You know, we are not talking religious things. We are talking about real life issues. This is the only book the West are like. Every other book in the world, the less are there. At least I have read books to be called an educated person. I have never seen a book that is alive except this book. This is the only book when you are reading it, you will be hearing the echo of the voice of the authors of the book. It will be speaking to you. This is the only mysterious and you cannot explain it. This is the only book that if you read it properly, it will shape your head, shape your ear, shape your mouth, cleanse your eyes, detoxicate your mind, cleanse your spirit, correct your, your mind. This is the only book that does that. Other books, when you read it, it can make you abstract in reasoning. This is the only book that the West are medicinal. A cure disease, just reading it. And it's all purpose drug. Spiritual, physical, psychological, emotional, vocational, marital, relational, no matter kind of disease, the worst can cure. And this is the only medicine, the overdose is good for your health. If you are that medicine, the overdose is very dangerous. This one, you can. If you read too much of this book, you can have negative side effects. Nobody can read too much of this book and have side effects. It means you are not reading correctly. I, I remember those days in Puto. Some of our lecturers that are involved in abstract courses behave abstractly. One doesn't come here that was teaching us organic chemistry because the more you read those things, it makes you abstract. But this one, the more you read, the more it corrects you. That's one thing about this book. Here they are. And I'm telling you, so you know I'm not talking religious things. There is no problem in this world that this book doesn't have answers. This is the only book that can serve as a reference textbook for all issues of life. No other book. If you have financial problems, consult this book. You have time problem management problems, consult this book. You have relational problems, consult this book. Any nomad, you want to pr prosper and do well in leadership, consult this book. You want to do well in admin, consult, consult this book. The only book, check any other one. Nothing. And let's say. You can't read this book sincerely and intelligently and remain stupid. Anywhere in the world. Nobody can read this book sincerely and intelligently. That's correct interpretation and remain stupid. Because any stupidity anywhere, if you analyze it, dissect it, extrapolate things from it, you will discover that that stupidity is rooted in rejecting what the Bible says. Just mention anyone, anyone, whether the politicians that are buying cars, they don't drive, they are packing money, they are packing things they don't use. They didn't hear this book. This book says a man's life does not consist of what they have. They said no. They started gathering. That's why they have problems. They open their garage. They have 50 cars. They are not driving it. The car is just a burden to them. One of the problems why we have a generation that is now crazy, it's, it's official to be mad now. You know, that's not a, that's some, you know what? This generation is looking for something new. They paint their body, they change their hair, they, 
taught something, they want to something new. But this group said there's nothing new under the sun. One generation goes, another generation comes. The water runs from the river into the sea. The sea is not full. It says the same course and return again. What do we say? I remember a young person challenged me that the hairstyle they're using now is new. They described it as I started laughing. I said, why are you laughing? I said, the one you're using now, when I was in primary school, 19, the primary school, 1975, 76, 77, it's mad people that used to use it that time. But now they have rebranded the thing. Now they have brought it home. It's not new, only that they changed the audience that was uh, <laughs> You know, when I was in primary school, you know how we know it, a madman. Your cloth does not have a four, they, are not, they don't have a four side. One side will be longer than the other. They will turn at the buttocks, turn at the knee, so that's how we know mad people. But now they say no, this thing that fits mad people can also fit uh, normal people. They brought it up. There's nothing new. This group says there is time for everything. Enter year one. Started doing kissy kissy touch touch my 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 fiance in year one. You have not passed one oh one. You have not passed physics one oh one. You have been doing that. That's why you have problems. He said there is time for everything. You fail your course and marry a wife, Van Coma. You see your head is not correct. <laughs> A young girl, you're not paying her school fees. You say, this is my girl. This is my girl. On what basis? If I see you with another man, I will deal with you. You are my girl. What did you contribute? Even a, co a bottle of Coke, you, you don't come. That's why your head is not correct. But this book will shape your head. You, you know, you, you, you see correctly, there is time for... Are you, are you getting me? But I'm telling you about this. Check any problem we have now. You, you know, this issue of immorality everywhere. People are blah, 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 they're doing as if they are looking for something. This book says, when you see honey, eat it. It's good. But that's how I said, when you see honey, mind the way you eat it. Because it will cause vomiting. That's why they have tried different things. That's why people are not sleeping with animals. Because they have kept eating the honey. They don't know what they're doing again. They don't. Their head have turned uh, upside down. Somebody say, listening to me. So that's why. Please, let's return to this book. Talk about the book. Get back your book. If you don't have it, go and buy the book. It's an error. You can't go to class without a notebook or textbook. Get the book. Get it. Get it, this book. Carry it. Don't be ashamed carrying it. Carry the book. I don't care if you, if you are a fashion person. Just get different colors, different sizes. They have it. It matches no matter the bag you are carrying. It will just match it there. Now, match your color, whether turquoise blue or purple or anyone. Just get it. Hi, this book. Can you lift up the book? Let's celebrate this book. What a wonderful book. What a wonderful book. Very old, but with new information. Let's read from this book, Ephesians chapter 1. We are looking at redeemed by the blood of Christ. I'll try to make it simple, but I, I trust the Lord I will sing. And when he sings, loads will be lifted. When he sings, there will be strength released in your inner man. Ephesians chapter 1, please read from verse number 7. Let's read. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he had abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has proposed in himself. Now, let's read again Colossians chapter 1. We'll read those two passages and then see how we read some very strong thoughts together. Colossians 1.20 And having made peace through his law of his cross, by him to reconcile 
How many times? I didn't hear you well. How many times? Reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now had he rectified. We are looking at redeemed by the blood of Christ. Please listen carefully. We have a problem and we are the generation that will change it. That Christianity is now beginning to be a set of activities organized in different shapes and forms. That's Christianity. There that are time to shout, there are time to dance, there are time to just perform some things and that is Christianity. No. It's superior to that. Christianity is God visiting man, pouring his life into man. We shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. It's a compound Hebrew word. God with us. God in us. God for us. God through us. The meaning of the matter. It's not a activity. You know, that's why. There are many Christians now because you have learned the activity, learned the language, learned the performance, you can now fit in. That's why MCs can perform how the pastors perform. You know, they all that, that performance now. No. That's a flow, that's a connection of life that is beyond the ordinary. And one of those core matters is the issue we're looking at. That we are redeemed. By the blood of Christ. To re be redeemed is that the matter is settled. You are put off. They settle the matter. You know, just like when you go to buy a car. If you are still depositing money, you come and deposit. They say, how much it remains? They say, it remains 800,000. You touch the car, touch and touch and you go home. You come and deposit money again. They say, it still remains. You can even snap picture with the car. But you can't go home with the car. The day you finish paying, they will open the They open the book, they open. They say, open the other side, open. open the, they will be opening anything you like them to open. And that car will be ready to go with you because you are paid off. When we say we now belong to Christ, we have been bought off. We are not given a badge. It's not a badge. They say, I'm not a Christian. Why are you talking like this? They don't bother, but I'm a Christian. You may not really see it, but we are put off. We no longer belong somewhere. We are no more something else. There is something we have become. People redeemed by the blood. Redeemed by the blood. I want to make this meeting, this message simple so that I want us to hold something. And when you hold that up, I, I would want us to do what is positive. Because being a redeemed in Christ is not, it's not religion. Now, let, let, okay, let me mention one or two things. If you remember in John chapter 10, verse 10, he said, The thief comes to the steal, to kill and to destroy. But I have come, not for you to join a group or religious corporate society. That you may have life and have it more abundantly. Hear this. You remember that the Bible talks about that the life of the flesh is the blood. Right. Now, assuming that you have, that, assuming that I want to put another blood into you, about 11 pints. They say that normal blood is about either 10 or 11 or thereabout. Now, if I want to add 20 pints of blood to you to give you life, it means that I have to remove the one that is there. Because you can't have more than the volume. Now, if it says, I have come that you may have life. Which one were you having before? Then if I'm going to have this one, it means that the other one has to be removed. Then I will now give you a life. And it says, life more abundantly. You are, you are, you are fellow students like me. 
If you do a research on that phrase, life more abundantly, particularly from the Greek, where they wrote it from, it connotes a life that is superior in quality and superabundant in quantity. It connotes a life that is beyond the natural, that is lived in the supernatural, it's mysterious. It connotes a life that overflows. It means that you can't have it without evidence. You can't have it and somebody close by cannot know because it's an overflowing life. That's why when they looked at them at Antioch, they said, these people are what? Christians. And that's why when they looked at you, they said, surely this is the Son of God. Because if you have that life, it will be overflowing that we can see. It is not ordinary life in which that you can explain. You know, they say, um, I like that kind of Christianity. You know how to blend. I like it. <laughs> you know, it means that Christianity corresponds and it's in resonance with the prevailing circumstances and situations. No, that's not what the Bible says. Then if any man be in Christ, it's a new what? It's not creation. Read your Bible properly. But well, it says it's a new creature. Creation is different from creature. You know, if I'm drawing you, I create an image of you. I can decide to change the ear, shape of the ear. It's now a new creation. You know, it is human. But if I say it's a new creature, and the first one I drew was a goat, the second one I drew cannot be goat, otherwise it will not be the same. It will be the same creature. It has to be a new one. That's why, if you back to John chapter 1, if you remember verse 10, verse 10 said he came to his own. Uh, uh, he made the word, but the word knew him not. 11 said he came to his own, but his own rejected him. 12 said, but as many as received him, to them gave me power, capacity, ability, authority to become the sons of God. Now, that thing looks like uh, honest, uh, not, it's not, it looks, it looks explicit. He now went to that 10. He said, these people are people born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but they are born of God. They are not born of blood. It means that their lifestyle is beyond the dictates of blood. You know what that means? You say, you know, in my family we used to steal. I'm still having uh, that problem. No. This one is not born of blood. That's why our friends in the West are suffering from civilized ignorance. They said, you know why I'm a homosexual or lesbian? It's genetic. That's an error. Because if it's genetic, it means it's connected to your blood. And if it's connected to your blood, you are not at fault. It's the manufacturer's fault. And the Bible says that there's no unrighteousness with God. And who is it that said to his maker, what have you done? And everything God does is a marvel. This is the doing of the Lord. And it is marvelous in our eyes. They are not born by the will of the flesh. They, even though I'm a Christian, I'm a man, but I still feel like a woman sometimes. That's why, you know. <laughs> it's not by the will of the flesh. Not by the will of man. We have discovered there are people that are homosexual by nature. You know, like the story they're telling us now. They came in a wrong body. They were men, but they came in the body of a woman. That's why they are feeling like men. He said, they are not born of the will of man. He said, I, want, I, I see myself thinking like a woman when I'm a man. It's not of the will. The, the, these new people, these new people, they are above the frequency of what blood can stop. What the will of man can stop. What the flesh can stop. Okay, let me help you. I want us to go back to where, but I want you to understand that this is not religion. It's not. If you go back to John chapter 3, you know, but that's why they talk about verse 3. It says they might be born of them, they cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay? Now, if you go to verse 5, verse 5 says, Very less unto you, except a man be born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. For that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Now, seven said, Marvel not that I say you must be born again. This is not uh, rocket science. Cool down. Don't marvel. Don't follow the term. Then verse 8 said, The wind blows where it leads, where it wants. You hear the sound. You see the effect. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going. So, it, everyone born of the Spirit. What does it mean? 
It means that everyone born of the Spirit operates in the frequency of the wind. What is the dynamics of the frequency of the wind? Hold that. You remember in Sagrated Science, they taught us about two instruments of wind, if you remember. One of them is wind gauge. The other one is what? Wind vane. People have forgotten here in Sagrated Science. So it is us wind vane and wind gauge. Wind gauge gives us the force, like a cup, how the force with which it's coming. Wind vane is the one that points east, west, north, and south. It tells us the way it's going so that they can dodge. Because the wind goes where it wants. It doesn't do negotiation. It doesn't listen to, not for public opinion. It just goes. Like he went to my village, removed my house, pulled down the wall. He didn't make it for me as a man of God. He doesn't care. It goes wherever it wants. So you only hear the sound. <laughs> now, if you check all the science books, there is no instrument called wind stop. You know why? The wind is unstoppable. So is everyone born of the Spirit. And everyone born of the Spirit is unstoppable. What does that mean? If you check your dictionary, there are three major synonyms of unstoppable. One is impregnable, indomitable, insurmountable. It means that when you are born of the Spirit, you become insurmountable. Nothing can capture you as a slave. You become indomitable. Nothing can root. No sin have dominion over you. You are impregnable. You can be wounded beyond repair. So don't tell me, sir. You know, this thing I've been doing it when I was in secondary school, I don't know how to pull up. No, you don't understand what the blood is about to do. What the blood does. Because it turns you to a new creature. The problem we have in the world, we have civilized confusion. What they cannot explain and overcome, they develop a new theology and ideology to accommodate it. But if any man be in Christ, all things are passed away. We hope that have become new. And so we are returning to this law of redemption. So I'm explaining what it means that we are redeemed. We are taken from the ordinary species to come a new creature, insurmountable, indomitable, impregnable, like the wind, born of God, not under the oppression of the, of the flesh or the blood or the will of man. What makes it peculiar, brethren? This redemption is by the blood. And that's why we want to hang it, is by the blood. What is about this blood? Number one, is that it is a precious blood. A precious blood. Go to First Peter chapter 1. Please be writing it down so that when you go home, you read it again. That's why I want you to, you are learning. When they come and everybody talk, including me, write it down. You go and look whether what is written there agrees with what they say. Don't take everything you hear. 18. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. is a precious blood without blemish, without spot, clean, entire. You know what it means? It means that it was enough. There was no spot. You know, you can manage something. You can buy a white shirt with a, a black dot. You say, but it will not show. It's behind. It's behind. Let's manage it. When they are counting people wearing white dress, will they count you or not? They will count you, but their white dress have black spot. You see, manage it. But this one, there is no spot. No blemish. It means that it was satisfied. Jesus didn't die a religious leader. He died as a worthy lamb. That was enough to satisfy all requirements of redemption. Because if you are using a lamb, it has to be a lamb with that spot. How can you deliver somebody that you are in the same problem with? Somebody had a Mass 101F, and he's the one coaching you in your Mass 101. Thank God for you. You are going to have S squared. I can deliver. The drowning man cannot deliver a drowning man. For we do not have a high priest who, who, who does not have the feeling of our infirmity. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. 
for he was tempted in all points. Yes! Without sin. In how many points? All. What is the meaning of all? Eh? What does all mean? All means. After all, is there anything remaining? He was tempted in all. Yes! Without sin. He said, Victorious. That's why in 15 he said, Wherefore? Come boldly to the corner of the Come and meet this man. And you obtain mercy. You find grace to help. Anytime, no matter the shape is coming, this man will give you grace. He was tempted at all points. That's why he tells you, there is no temptation that is not common to man. God will not allow you to be tempted with what, over, with what you cannot bear. However, however, no matter the shape of the temptation, in the temptation he will make a way of escape. Because he's a consultant in every temptation. Don't mind the theory that they're developing now. I saw in a marriage place they were teaching Christian class. They said when you marry, understand the what they call that one again. Uh, temperament of your husband, whether melancholy or that you need to know so that when he comes that way and behaves or she behaves that way, you understand it. Uh, that, I ask them, which one did Corinthians say will pass away? If the melancholy and all the things stay there, which one passed away now? They say he can be hot tempered, you know. You know if, he, if you don't stand the temperament, you cannot. <laughs> and then which one passes away when you become a new creature? See, see ideology. Uh, thank you, Lord. That blood, that blood, that blood, that blood, it's a fresh, very fresh. And no, he was tempted in all points. I have some young people arguing that in this 21st century, you have problem with immorality, you cannot have a clean marriage, some people are not developing, why must we go to church to sleep, uh, to, I mean, to wed, once you do traditional wedding, give them two bottles of moss and then uh, you are married, you can start sleeping later, when pastor returns from conference, he can now uh, bless you people, uh, you know, you can't hold yourself, uh, you know, they say this in the 21st century, there's a lot of pressure and why? I ask them, this was the first century that you cannot be chased again. Keep yourself clean. I ask them, which part of your body is the 21st century version that was not in Joseph when he said no? Which part of your body is the 21st century version? You know, when we have new version, it cannot work like the old. So which part of your body is the 21st century version? The devil that is tempting you is here to the first century devil. The method he is using to tempt you is here to the first century version. All the method of the devil has not changed. The loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, the price of life. Go and study it has changed. Old devil, old temptation formula, <laughs> old body you are carrying in a new generation. Yes, in the Which one? Do we have new demons now? Demons of no multiply. They don't marry. They don't give birth to new uh, demons. It's those old angels that fell that became demons. So what is the problem? If you understand that, the precious blood that can redeem us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We have been bought off. What I'm saying is simple this way is that I want you to get angry if there is anything around you that does not re represent his redemption. He said, you know, as a man, as a man, are you a man? You are not a godly man. You are now born of God. That which is born of God. Is born of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. He said, as a man, when your wife insults you, you can't hold yourself, you must laugh her. I said, from where? Who told you that? Then? We are not born of the flesh. You are not a new creature. He said, how do you mean? I said, listen, a new creature, you are placed on the two principles. He said, it means don't slap your wife for where now? I like the principle here. Yeah? A principle says, love your wife like yourself. That one I said to I like myself. I've heard that before. I had F in, in physics 101. When I, was, I didn't slap myself. I said, oh boy, cheer up. It don't, it don't happen. It don't happen. I continue. I went to write the sheet. I don't slap myself. 
I didn't, I've never flogged myself. I've never even called myself idiot. With all I have done. Then why will my wife offend me? I call her an idiot. It's because I have not loved her like myself. Why do you love her like I tell you? That's what. You know the funny thing? Even the people doing roommates in the campus already fight it. They are, you know, say I'm the head. I'm, if I slap you, you know yourself. <laughs> I said, these people are into trouble. They are still at the veranda. They are fighting. By the time they now enter the main tent, now what? That's why marriages are breaking one year, two years, one and a half years. They are breaking pastors, deacons, deaconesses, tongue speaking, not tongue speaking, uh, ushers. Eh? Because the devil does not have respect for any of those things. It's the redemption. The precious Lord. It's a law to pay for any sin. If you paid food, you should carry if your own and your father pays, boy, you carry your bag or your car. Don't look at anybody's face. If you like, don't bring the person you are going before because the person has been paid for. So you just stand up. Don't accept any excuse. They say, you know, before you were an unbeliever, you were practicing masturbation, you were smoking. These things don't happen. It's gradually, gradually, by a replacement reaction, displacement reaction. <laughs> Get angry. This law. Okay, let's be reading the Bible, because I want us to make it simple. Can, can we move a little bit? Can we go to Hebrew chapter 9? Hebrew chapter 9. I want to be reading because I didn't write it. I saw it. I saw it. You know, we're having a problem this generation. Everybody is struggling to say something special. They say, ah, this is mystery. Mm, rema, 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 rema. I don't have a problem with that. But let me tell you something to help you. In this Christian faith, all of us join. Nobody signed MOU with Jesus. We are all like sheep wandering away. He died by himself, saved all by himself. We now come and join. You can't join and now tell us we have a new pattern of Christianity in the century. Something you joined. <laughs> you joined. What you do is to discover the thing that you joined. Because the owner has already paid the price, paid the thing, settled the devil, defeated him, said to oh God, what is happening? And you now join. You can't determine the time. You only discover what he has said. If somebody say, follow him, eh? You know, some people that are 45 years, 50 years, 51, they say that what is written in the Bible is not actually correct. I'm teaching you mystery. You enter there, you will not come out again. You enter in the mystery, you will not come out. That's why I'm showing you what is written, because all of us join. They said, no, 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 he's a prophet. He has apostolic anointing. Where did you get it from? Read your Bible from. He said, some he gave to the apostle. <laughs> some he gave to the prophet. Some he gave. How can you be giving? You're now arguing with the person that gave. He has said something here. All scripture is written by inspiration. It's what came out of the heart of God. You have to discover, not just talk rubbish. He gave. He gave. He gave. Even though some are now born prophet from their womb. I didn't know about that. But this one I know he gave. <laughs> he gave. What if he decides to collect it back? Because he gave. He said, when I speak, I speak as oracle. Don't argue what I said. From where? Oracle since when? When were you born? This matter was settled about 2,000 years ago. You are just 40 something years. Now we must listen to you. They live in, what I'm telling you is not a Bible. It's hot from the oven of heaven. That oven will burn you. Concentrate, concentrate on what is written. Find out what is written. Hebrew chapter 9. Let's read from verse 12. It's neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own his blood. He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption. That's the second point we are coming now. For if the blood of boots and of goods and, uh, and the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, 
who through the internal spirit offered himself with, to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. If ordinary blood of gold can pour on a speaker, they say the speaker is sanctified. It's not clean to be used in the Holy of Holy. How much more the blood of Jesus that was offered with that spot? Purge your conscience. How many conscience do you have? You have one. He said the blood is enough to purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. What he does is not the prohibition. He forged. You know what is to forge? Hmm. How many of you have been privileged to prepare a chicken intestine for chopping? Have you been privileged before? Oh, you are township people. It's all that. Right? Uh, to prepare that chicken intestine for cooking, you have to forge it. You press it, press it. In fact, what we are doing now is that you have to turn it upside down. The inside will come out so that you wash everything clean. Once you chop and yeah, no shaking, no, no, <laughs> no nothing. You know, you punch it in and out. Today, what we are doing is publish. They say, don't mind the man of God. That man has anointing. The only problem he has problem with women, but apart from that, he, uh, <laughs> he has anointed. Ah, when that lady worship, heaven come. The only problem he has, he used to tell lies. You know, it goes for lies, you know, but if it is worship, ah, she carry up. She carry. <laughs> you know, he has those stamps now. They're a good Christian, except for the fighting they used to fight. But if it's a good Christian, <laughs> it's a good Christian, but he used to fight. You know, if it is. Prayer. That man is too much. I know he has only one problem. He doesn't return money when you give it. But, uh, but if it is prayer, hey, the spirit of intercession is on him. <laughs> I wonder who is interceding to. Because the more you come closer to the fire, no plastic material on you will remain on your body. It is something. The closer you are. No plastic can pass through the fire and remain the same. Put your conscience. It's a precious law. Nothing does that. They thought before if you do education, it will help forge our mind. Education does not forge the mind. Education gives expression to the mind. The Greek word educato means to express. Express. That's why education is not it. Can't forge the mind. If you are not educated and you are a thief, you will be stealing palm oil, palm fruit. You will be jumping face, carry soup on top of the fire. Pia, jump, it will not drop. But if you are educated and you are, and, you are, and, you are, and you are a thief, you use computer. Child. Child. You deal with them. What education did is to give expression to what you are carrying inside. It cannot purge the conscience. That's why when educated people steal in an establishment, it's watertight. All the things, documents are prepared properly and properly. But the educator, it's only the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. So it's not traveling abroad that will cause you. If you travel abroad, you may finally marry a man as your wife and return home. <laughs> That's not abroad. It's only the blood. The blood. The blood. It's a precious blood. Enough. No matter the kind of conscience you have, whether double darkness or single digit darkness, it can budge, can budge, it can budge. You know, when people think about their iniquity, they say it cannot work. I like going to Rura Crusade. There was one who went. People answered us a call. It was the camp crusade. We brought some people who were feeding them. I gave one woman food. Return after that, she has refused to eat. I said, Mama, eat. No woman. I came back again and said, Mama, he said, no. I said, Mama, what's the problem? You don't like the food. He called me said, my son, no one, come. Who has this food? I say, it's all. We prepared it. He said, that means you use church money to pray. I say, yes. That means it's God's money you use. I say, yes. I said, I will not eat. I said, Mama, what do you do? He said, if I eat this food, God will kill me. I said, what did you do? He said, you not understand. I said, Mama, eat. I came back again, she has not eaten. I came and sat beside her. I said, Mabi, eat it. When it comes to kill you, I asked him to wait. I'm the one that uh, gave you the food. She started eating. 
Say, but I'll eat on one condition. You follow me to my house. Followed her to her house. She now showed me one charm like a ball. I say there's something inside it. I said, I will lose it. Say, if I lose it, I will die. I said, I want to die now. I want to go to heaven. So I started losing the tent. I lose it and I didn't feel nothing. The woman started screaming. Say, they gave it to me. Give me some chance. I've been poisoning people, making some people mad, and all that kind of thing. He said, That's why I said, This year, God, will he still forgive me? But this Lord is. I'm fortunate. I remain a slave. That's why we're here this morning. That you have every kind of slavery on your function by the engagement of the Lord. I preached on the Chawan Scripture Union program at Peggy. So when I finished, I went on. A man called me from Nonita. He said, I'm coming to your house in Omoai. Give me that thing you drank. Let me drink. I want to have the same experience. You said you are free from immorality, fornication, adultery, and all that. I want to be free. Whatever is the cost, I will pay. I said, I, don't, I didn't drink anything. He said, no. Stop the over you drank. I said, what's your problem? He said, I'm married for, for, I think, 11 years. I have five children. But there's no other day I don't sleep with another man's wife or daughter. But you said that and I want to experience it. Whatever it will cost, give it to me. I said, sir, don't come. There's nothing to drink. He said, what do I do? I said, where are you? Tell me I'm in my bedroom. I said, wow, you're in the right place. Cool down. You're alone. He said, yes. I said, there's somebody beside you. He said, there's nobody. I said, don't mind. I'm seeing him. You can't see him. He's not beside you. Now, what you're going to do is to consciously and intentionally speak to him. He said, who is it? I said, his name is called Jesus. He's by you now. Tell him from your heart what you want, that you want to be free. You don't like this thing. He said, will you walk? I said, tell him. Relax. Be, make sure you know you are talking to him. If you don't have put it that tell him that I told you that if he tells him that he will do it. And that it will happen. He said, okay. I uh, the phone. Two weeks after, the number called me back. Reminded me I'm that man that wanted to come and bring something. I said, hey, that happened? He said, the thing worked. He said, this is two weeks. I have not touched anybody's wife or daughter. That thing works. Can I come to Umuaya? Let's discuss. I said, hey, you cannot come. Let's discuss. Before you are coming to drink something, I don't have anything to give you. And he traveled from Anambra here. And we sat down. We begin to discover. Because Titus chapter 2 verse 11 said, the, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. That same grace that brought salvation. Teaching us that denying uncleanness and, and loss. We can live so badly and righteously in this present world. Looking forward for that blessed hope. The same grace can teach you. Oh, not the one that are now talking different rubbish. One said to me, when I sin, it's not my spirit, it's my body. And when I die, my body will go, my spirit will go back to God. I say, oh, wow. <laughs> Civilized confusion all over the place. Here they are. It is internal redemption. No, what we mean by internal redemption is not that now you are saved. No matter what you do, it will cover you. No, that's not what it means. It means that this redemption, Hebrew 9 12, does not expire. You remember your phone. Sometimes they will tell you update because the things inside there have what? But if you refuse to update very soon, what you'll be saying, network busy, network busy, network busy. You didn't commit anything. You paid full price. The phone is still correct, but it has what? Expired. This one does not expire. Otherwise, after 1,000 years, you need to die again to have updated version of the blood. But this one is internal redemption. It works anytime for any tribe, for any generation. For any age group, it was. It's internal. So we are redeemed. Listen, you know what it means? Our redemption stands the test of time. Somebody will not come and tell you, when were you redeemed? That was in 20 years ago. Said, ah, oh, that. No, no, the expiring date is don't cross. Come back for no redemption. It is still potent. That same blood that washed away sin is still washing away sin now. They watch our sins of Africans, can watch the Indians, can watch the Europeans, can watch the Americans. They don't have respect for race or color. That's the redemption. Listen to me. If you are redeemed in Omoaya and you are set free, when you get to America and demons say, oh boy, don't come to America, don't talk about it, shut up your mouth. It's internal 
redemption. He doesn't have problem of location and space. Don't mind some people tell you, ha, be careful. Where are you traveling this December? I'm going to Rivarine area. I say no, but the fire says the spirit in Rivarine is not. Uh, it's not the same with the one on uh, <laughs> on mainland. You know, these are all confusion in the head. It's internal redemption. We have been set free. It doesn't expire. It is for all time. So I can keep rejoicing in it. When I was young, now I'm old. He has saved me. He has saved me. He has washed me. All I need to do is to hold on to what he said. Now, let's connect to the last point I want to make. Now, I require to make it simple. That when we talk about being redeemed by the blood of Christ, it is full redemption. Let's read some few scriptures. Let's go back to Ephesians chapter 2. Please note it. Note it. We just read it connected to two other verses. Because I want you to rise from this place full of assurance that no devil will harass you. Ephesians chapter 2. Look at verse 13. It said, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made what? Nine by by what? Ah, you are not reading by. Say you come with it. I am reading. You open it. You know what that man? What is reading is written there. Some of them you mark it a line. You who we are far off, alienated, has been brought near by what? How many people were brought near? How many people? Everyone that was redeemed. Everywhere that has been. You know, there is this ideology on. I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> Thank God for that. You know, me as a, uh, a preacher in Omaha here, when your leaders will come, I'll tell them that I've been praying for NCCM, seeing that they was better, because I'm prophetically covering NCCM. People have to see me regularly, to be remain under my covering. So you now have prophets that cover you. Prophets that cover you. Right? I don't know where you got it from. He said, all of you that were far away by the blood has been brought near. Has been brought near. Everybody has been brought near to him. Nobody is a mediator again except Jesus. That's nothing like prophet, open my fire. Prophet, look at my cave. Prophet, go into the sanctum sanctuary. And find out my case. These are all ignorant, spiritual ignorant. What have I said? Is somebody still hearing me? You are not answering. I say you are still hearing me. You have been brought near. Okay, okay. Let me let's explain what is brought near. Go to verse 18 of that Ephesians chapter 2. Can we read verse 18? Everybody want to go. For in him, what? Who, who have access? Eh? Ah, ja, ja. We both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Everyone has access that have been redeemed by the blood unto the Father. Read verse 19. What does verse 19 say? Now we are no more what? Strangers and foreigners. But what are we now? Fellow citizens and what? And members of which household? Eh? I didn't hear you. Well. Members of which household? Is the firstborn? Does the firstborn have more right to the father than the lastborn? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Every child in the household have the same birth right to the father. Every child. Every child. We are now members of the house. Because we have been redeemed. You see, this thing settles me. The devil does not talk rubbish. We say, come on here. Even when Paul in sin, you don't allow the devil to harass you. Because this is a family matter. Who did I sin against God? Who is God, my father? Who am I, the child? How does he consign the devil? And my friend, come on here. Let me settle with my uh, father. You don't allow him to use guilt to destroy you. Because you didn't sin against him. You sinned against your father. You go to your father, you settle the matter. 
You don't need somebody, you don't need to come to my office for me to anoint you specially because that sin requires a new level of anointing. <laughs> you go to your father. He said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Let's settle it. And once the father settles the matter, the matter is settled. If it has caused a communal effect, you have the consequences because they may suspend you, but you will be realized that your father has settled the matter. You now follow the father what you want. You are a member of the household by the blood. Listen, represent this gives you joy. Something that makes you a member of the household. I, which one will I use, philosophy? Okay, okay, okay. Assuming there is a copper here whose father from another mother is the elder brother of the prince and governor of this state, and the boy carry you from here to government house, they include your name among the people that will be coming to eat every day in government house, collect pocket money every house. Will you forget that boy? Eh? Even if you quarrel, you are saying, stop talking to me. Will you beg him or not? My boy, I go beg him. My no career. <laughs> I go need him because if you don't beg him, what will be cut off? No be small hell. Eating every day, collecting pocket money. I no go joke with that boy. Any friend where one collect the boy, I cut off the friend. <laughs> Because that boy is a high level connection for me. For the next nine months, I'll be here. It is the blood of Jesus that brought me into being a member of household. Who should I be listening to than this Jesus? Which friend should I be listening to? What did you do for me? Since you became friend, you have been a parasite. You have been wearing my dress, wearing my shoes, spoiling my tent. You didn't connect me to nothing. Jesus connected me that I now became a member of the household of God. And you are here talking rubbish. I will cut our friendship there and then with automatic alacrity. Because what Jesus did, he made me a member of the household. A fellow citizen. Not second class citizen, not an illegal migrant. He made me a fellow citizen. By the blood. By the blood. By the blood. And now I have access. I have access. I have access. Hebrew chapter 12, 24 said, You are common to Jesus, the material of the New Testament, and to the blood of the new covenant. The blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of heaven. By this connection, this blood keeps speaking over me. The blood keeps speaking over me. How far can the blood speak? He said, the, the, the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. No, a no covenant in my village was done before the foundation of the world. So, no covenant can be superior than the blood that was shed before the foundation of the world. So, that's why I can challenge any covenant. I don't care when it was done. No sacrifice can be superior than the blood shed on the cross of Calvary. So they tell me, remember, the very, the very ram, the very, the very, the very cow, the cow they buried. When the blood fell down, nobody knew. But when that blood dropped from the cross, the earth started shaking. And then there was darkness. It's not ordinary blood. You see, stop listening to these people. Tell you thing. Tell you thing. Tell you thing. You don't know what the blood is speaking. Which, which voice can be louder than the voice of the blood? Go to your village, check there. Every idol in your village has limited scope of oppression. Once he leaves your village, it's no more idol. By the time he reaches back, it's now artifact. By the time he reaches Lagos, they are selling it to Germany. That, that, I, that idol that was sh shaking in your village. But the blood of Jesus speaks. Anytime, any day, anywhere. And they overcame him by the blood. And by the words of their testimony, they overcame him by the blood. They, some, there are some prayers we pray, which is a fruit of sincere ignorance that is affecting us. Somebody will tell you, I'm here as a prophet to, to recover your destiny. Where did your destiny fall before? Where did you drop it? Is his voice superior to the blood? The blood speaks better than Hear the I said, when we come like this, we're coming to fellowship with the blood of sprinkling. 
That's why no fellowship is ordinary fellowship. No fellowship. In this meeting now, the blood is speaking. It's speaking. It's speaking. That's why our prayers are not empty prayers. The blood is speaking. No matter when the thing was done, the blood was shed before the foundation of the world. And it speaks. It dropped the earth, the earth started shaking. The sky saw it and said, Oh God, I never do. The, the, the sky became dark because the blood dropped. Nothing will remain in your life as a mountain when the blood drops. And what we'll be doing this evening quickly will be to engage the blood. How can I decide to worship God? Immorality will not allow me. I come by the blood. What part of my conscience have not been poured? I said I will not be lying again, but lies come out. No! I engage the blood. I engage the blood. No devil can withstand the voice of the blood. We are being redeemed. Devil, you don't have a say. I'm being redeemed by the blood. A blood without spot or rainbow. The blood, the blood, the blood.
Dragon by the blood of the Lamb and by the testimony of our mouth. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. That speaks better than the blood of Abel. The blood of Jesus that is working for us. Working in our infirmity away. Cleansing us from all our infirmities. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for chains are broken in your name. For we come in the name of the Lord. We say thank you, Jesus. 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 For the blood of Jesus set us free. For seas and sorrows. For the blood of Jesus set us free. Jesus, we pray. 
Can you just search for our heads and bless that day? For the virtue that has come out of him, that the Lord will replenish in abundance. That his anointing will never run dry. That this word that he has preached, it will not stand against him in judgment. He will continue to be fresh, fresh anointing, fresh oil in the name of Jesus. That the Lord will continue to empower him. He will strengthen him. More wisdom, more knowledge, fresh intent in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your pastor prayer. For in Jesus' name we pray. Can somebody please celebrate Jesus? Celebrate Jesus. We please have our seats. I would also like us to celebrate. I can see that if you look beside Daddy, you can see a beautiful damsel. Or can you see? Can you see a woman? Can you see an old woman? Who can you see? A beautiful damsel. Can you just please celebrate mommy? Thank you for worshiping with us, ma. Thank you, Daddy. We are indeed blessed. That was powerful. Who did this? Oh my God! I believe you are mightily blessed. Thank you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you are blessed this evening, can you jump on your feet and shout a big hallelujah! 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 By the special grace of God, today's service is really powerful. Very, very powerful. Hallelujah! All right. I... Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. All right, can you turn to your neighbor say you are welcome to service? Say you are welcome to service. Hallelujah. Okay, uh, before we proceed to the announcement, I want to welcome those that are fellowshipping with us for the first time. If today, if today is your first time of fellowshipping with us, please can you raise your hand? If today is your first time of fellowshipping with us, please can you wave your hand? All right. All right. Okay. Offering time. Offering time. All right. If you are here with your offering, please can you package it quickly? If you are here with your offering or your time, please package it quickly, even as we give unto the Lord. Package your offering as we give unto the Lord. All right, before we proceed to the uh, announcement this evening, I would like to say something. Uh, by the special grace of God, um, we want to uh, inaugurate new ACC, ACCC committee member today. <laughs> Bad C A C B C. Bad C A C B C. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You know, under the surface of the of the of the earth. There is time for everything. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Please, if I mention uh, the committee, please, I want you to jam your hands together and then step forward. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. The first um, committee member that we have this evening, the first person is head of logistics. 
Mr. Miraku Okore. Alright, the second person here is head of activities, Mr. Oredende Philip. <laughs> He's the head of logistics. He's the head of logistics. Alright. The third person there is the head of media, Mr. George. Please, can you jump your hands together? Mr. George, head of logistics. Alright. Okay. Um, SCPC Welfare Secretary, Ms. Agbeleye Mary. <laughs> well, Alright, she's not around. Okay, let's move forward. Then SCPC Treasurer, Ms. Uh, Prosperity Abimbola. SCPC Secretary Okoya Oko, Okoya Olua Jumelke and SCPC Chairman SCPC Chairman Mr. Akban Enol invite the state president to pray for them. Amen. I, I, I believe, I believe <laughs> we've not seen anything, right? ACPC batch B was just an introduction. <laughs> the batch is going to be what? <laughs> Massive, right? Massive. So I want you to, I want you to <laughs> Mr. Sonoma said we should not allow this. <laughs> so, in that mind of massiveness, can we begin to usher prayer into their life? <laughs> that they will do mightily. <laughs> they will do beyond their fathers. That <laughs> the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. That the Lord will use this world to accomplish that which He said to do. That we enable them, in the strength of them, we make provision of men, provision of resources provision of good weather that everything will turn in their favor in the name of Jesus for in Jesus day we pray our father and our God we want to say thank you Lord for this vessel that you elected oh Lord for them to carry out this task we say be that today in the mighty name of Jesus we commit them into your hands Lord the tool they need Lord the wisdom they need Lord to carry out this activity effectively we will grant unto them in the mighty name of Jesus we pray, Lord, that all the activities, all the day, Lord, it shall be a blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. The financial resources that they need, it will be made available with ease in the name of Jesus. We pray that day shall be glorious in the mighty name of Jesus. Even beyond their imagination, beyond their understanding, you will surprise them and make it mighty in the mighty name of Jesus. Grant them peace and unity in the mighty name of Jesus. Everyone that is going to be a problem among them, you, God, will correct them with the rod of correction in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Alright, please cast your offering as we listen to the following announcement. Cast your offering and tithe as we listen to the following announcement. All right. Um, every Tuesday we go out for hospital evangelism. Tuesday, hospital evangelism, and it's compulsory for every family house member. And I urge each and every one of us to turn up for hospital evangelism because it's very, very necessary. Because one of the key core of NCCM is what evangelism. So I urge each and every one of us to turn up for evangelism. Please, I beg you in the name of God. 
Hallelujah. Then every Friday, we go out for street evangelism. And it is also necessary for every, every family house, every core member. In fact, it's a mandate of God upon our lives. And I urge each and every one of us to turn up for street evangelism. Hallelujah. Okay, every Wednesday, we had our midweek services, which is word feast. On Wednesday, we come together to share the word of God, to, work, to meditate on the word of God. Please and please, I urge each and every one of us to work, turn up for our midweek service. It's necessary and it's mandatory for every family house member. All right. See, so want to remind us of our project challenge, for our project challenge. For serving core member is 10,000 naira, and non-serving core member is 20,000 naira. And I want to also beg you, please and please, try to remit your money. You can pay it a bit by bit. You cannot just, you cannot pay it. If you don't want to pay it at once, you can pay it instrumentally. See, you complete it. So try as much as you can to remit the, the camp challenge. All right. Uh, state fasting and prayer. State fasting and prayer. Prayer day uh, is on the 15th of July. State fasting and prayer is on the 15th of July. So I want to uh, bring it to your notice. Just don't forget it. On the 15th of this month will be our state day of fasting and prayer. All right. Then uh, publicity is on the Good News Family House. Good News Family House. By the special grace of God, on the 23rd of this moon will be our publicity Sunday. Ah. It's like we are not happy about that. All right. On the, um, okay. By the special grace of God, starting from on the 10th of this moon, we'll be praying for badge B string 1. On the 21st of this moon, we'll start the prayer for badge B stream one. All right. Okay. After daily confession, uh, Transco Esco will lead us in the uh, family house song. Right before we, we, we uh, continue, there is a program here organized by our daddy. There's a program here. I think each and every one of us have it. Alright, our daddy has a program here. Yeah, I think every one of us have this program. And I want to let you know that we should not forget to pray for the program. And you, if you can make it to the program, try, try as much as you can to make yourself available for these two programs here. Try as much as you can to make yourself available. All right. I guess it, each and every one of us have cast out um, our offering. All right. Okay. You can go ahead and cast your offering. All right, please can we be on our feet as we take our uh, uh, daily confession?
Hallelujah. All right, after the, after the grace, Franco Esco will take us in the family song. Hallelujah. The grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Come to someone say, God bless you forever. Yeah. 